think of here dawn. we are yes and here we are and here it is and so it is and all the good things i am so excited all right you guys this is such an amazing topic if i do say so myself this is going to be a blaster of a workshop once again if i do say so myself so here's the deal today i will be talking about the language of love right now a lot of you all are like madhurima is this going to be about the five languages five love languages yes and something else so i'm going to leave it to you guys to actually watch this entire workshop to figure out what is going to happen towards the end what is that secret language that i love talking about a lot but here's something that i want you guys to do for whoever's watching this live or replay let me know down in the comments i'll be posting this on youtube let me know if you are resonating with uh, whatever i'll be sharing here share your favorite takeaway share your favorite points say yes say all the good thingies in the comments because i love being praised like it's something that's important to me so if you do that i know that you all love me and obviously i'm, I'm so dope uh, i'm kidding but honest i am dope i am dope i'm not going to lie uh, <laughs> yes so dope so today is all about the language of love but something i wanted you guys to do is i invite you to take this in two different ways number one either look at the language of love for yourself as an individual and look at the language of love for your partners for your relationships for everyone around you so i don't necessarily think that the languages of love are restricted to only the relationship that you hold with your spouse you hold with your partner or partners it is something that is universal in the way that it exists so for me i would genuinely invite you whatever is present for you right now let me frame it like this whatever is present for you right now if it is the relationship with yourself if it is the relationship with your partner if it is the relationship with your parent with your sibling uh, with your friends whatever is most present for you right now look at this workshop from that angle if you rewind and replay this workshop sometime in the future and you are focusing on a different relationship then know that these things exist this is basically the foundation for you to work on things by yourself you can look at it however you want to look at it you can look at these rules how many ever times you want to look at it right there's no restriction that this is only restricted to the relationship that you have with your partner i personally feel that it is universal in its existence um and yeah i'm excited let's go all right let's yes let's jump into it so number one why language i feel like language is something that is very powerful it's the pulse right it's the pulse of how we communicate with each other and i want to kind of come back to the main word which is communicate communication is something that i personally feel is the heartbeat of a relationship it is what ensures that the relationship thrives and it can be if used poorly be the reason why it fails right i'm gonna i know this is like a bitter pill but for me personally from what i have seen from what i have read in comic books and novels and all of those things but also what i have experienced with the people around me with the relationships that i have and with the number of people that i've helped i feel like communication and language is something that's really powerful you know it's what connects us it's what gets us into the nitty gritty it gets us talking it gets us having conversations so it can either be something that solves the problem or it can be the thing that creates the problem which is why i feel it's really important to understand what language are you using how are you communicating with whoever you are communicating it with right like obviously there are times when in the heat of the moment you let go of all the things that you have piled up within yourself and it all comes out and you're like i didn't want to say that but i'm saying it because it's what's real for me right now and it often ends up hurting other people however i'm not going to dive into that that is a topic for another day what i want to come back to is the power of communication the importance of communication and what it holds space for what it creates space for now there is this book by gary chapman where he talks about the five love languages that we are going to dive deeper into and 
here's the very first language. Now, by language, I don't necessarily mean something that is outspoken. It can be something that feels like a language that can be used as a tool to communicate with the person in front of you or with the person within. So moving forward, I would like personally at this point of time in my life, I am working on evolving the relationship that I have with myself. So I am going to use that as a tool to communicate with myself, to communicate my thoughts and emotions with you guys out there, but to do it in a way where you understand what I'm saying and I as an individual understand what I'm saying. So just to make it easier, that is the aspect that I am going to hold dear to me and that is the aspect that I'm going to utilize to explain these five different languages of love to you. The number one, words of affirmation. Personally, I feel like a lot of times in any relationship, there's the honeymoon period and then there comes the period of the real life, right? The honeymoon period is when you just get started into a relationship. For example, when you get started with rebuilding the relationship that you have with yourself and if you haven't watched it, I'm going to attach a link somewhere up there where we hosted a workshop along with the Stress Busters community to talk about how to rebuild the relationship with yourself. But when you start rebuilding the relationship, the first few days, few weeks, few months, you will notice that uh, you are in the honeymoon period where everything is nice and everything's fluffy, everything's good. Everything's like, this is the perfect thing. Like, why, why didn't I do this before? And all of those good mushy feelings, you are going to have that. I'm not going to lie. You're going to have that. But very quickly, those feelings will dissipate and you will get into the real stuff. You will get into actually building the relationship so far you were expressing the love which is dope which is good which you shouldn't stop doing however after a point of time things get real and then you have to work on the hard stuff you have to work on things that don't necessarily mean fun that's not necessarily enjoyable you're going to have to work on all of those things and especially if you're working with a relationship with yourself this is where healing gets dirty you know what I mean like People have romanticized healing for such a long time, but when you actually get down to the nitty gritty of it, it starts to pick up all the things you have logged away inside your memory palace and be like, I'm not going to touch that chest. I know it exists, but I don't want to touch it. You're going to have to bring that up. You're going to have to work through it. And that's when you start to notice that things are going to start getting a bit too real. Now, this can translate into different relationships. For example, uh, when you are in a relationship, when you just started dating someone, everything's exciting, everything's, ooh. And then after a few days, when you start to communicate about what your goals are for the future, what you want to achieve together, what you want to achieve personally, what are the boundaries, things can get a bit shaky, right? So this can translate to many different relationships. And I want to actually invite you to hit pause if you're watching this on the replay hit pause and think about when relationships or a, pers a particular relationship that you are thinking about as we are going through this workshop when did it start to get shaky when did you go from the honeymoon period to the period of getting real right I want to invite you to actually think about that time and I want you to think how words of affirmation created change for you what does words of affirmation mean words of affirmation basically mean validating someone basically mean saying yes that is amazing yes I love you yes I see you yes I hear you yes I enjoy your presence yes I'm proud of you you have all these things basically all the affirmations that you see say in front of a mirror that is what is come that is what comes into this play right? Like the words of affirmation. When you see someone in your relationship that you are doing something really difficult, for example, if I am talking about the relationship that I have with myself and I'm working on healing and I notice that there are a lot of emotions that are being upheaved, a lot of emotions that are being brought forth that can get scary, can get overwhelming, I can hit pause and be like, yo, I just want to thank you. I just want to let you know that what you're doing right now, it's so dope. It's so amazing. I am so proud of you. I see you. This is tough shit. And I see you working on it. I see you putting 
your best foot forward. I see you pushing through. I see you not quitting. And I appreciate you. I am grateful for you. I love you. You are doing so good. You're so powerful. You're so strong. You are the best individual in the planet right now for doing the work that you're doing for yourself. That is words of affirmation. Think about this. Every time things get scary, do you have the power to hit pause and then reflect? Hit pause and then think about, I might not be able to change this situation. I might not be able to change the stimuli, the things that are affecting me right now. But one thing I can change is how I look at it. The best way to look at it is to give back power to me. A lot of times in difficult situations, we give our power away to the situation. We give our power away to the thing that is triggering all these things. You know, it can be a person, it can be a situation. For example, when COVID happened, everyone was blaming everyone. It can get very easy to give that power away. Words of affirmations allow us to get that power back to ourselves and look at things from a positive perspective. I know things are difficult right now, but you're doing so great. I know things are crazy right now, but I love the way that you are able to hit pause, take a deep breath and look at things from a positive perspective. Look at things from the logical sense. I love that you're not stressing out. I love that you are doing everything possible right now you are taking the best possible pathway out you are thinking about the multiple routes that you can take to win this particular situation and i'm proud of you saying those things can create such a huge change and i'm not gonna tell that to you while i'm saying this in this webinar i invite you the next time you face a situation where you notice that Everything's going every single way possible. Nothing's working out. Take a moment to have, to give back to yourself, to bring the power back to yourself, to say thank you, to say I'm grateful, to give yourself words of affirmation, to tell yourself how strong you are and notice what happens next. Notice what happens next and drop them in the comments to share your experience with the people around us. Now, one thing that I do want to tell you before we jump on to the next act, uh, sorry, the next ooh, languages of love. Everyone has different languages of love that they reciprocate to, that they resonate with. For me, it's words of affirmations. For Karina, it might be something else. For Arka, it might be something else. It every single person prioritizes their love languages of love in different way so something that i invite you to do is after the end i'm going to repeat this once again but towards the end of this workshop i want you to sit down and think about what do you resonate the most with out of the five to six languages that i'm going to share with you what is it that you resonate the most with prioritize them and pick them and then communicate them with yourself, with the people, with whatever relationship you are holding close to you right now as we go about this journey, as we go about this workshop. Communicate that because let's be real, no one is a mind reader in today's day and age. If they are, my heart goes out to you because I don't know what you're listening to. People can get chaotic. So uh, thank you for your service, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But you have to let people know what works best for you. People are not going to understand just by looking at you what works best for you. It's something that we can hope for and it's a great hope, but oftentimes it's best to communicate. It's best to create that foundation on a solid ground other than, you know, rather than being like, you know what, here's an empty space. You can throw things. I will stand on it. I will see if it works. If I topple, that means you are wrong. If I don't topple, that means you have hit the mark. Why complicate? Just tell the person that this is what works for me. What works for you? They put the block down. You put the block down. You have solid ground to work on. You have solid ground to build. That is so huge. So 
Yeah, Karina, do you have anything you want to add on before we jump into the next language of love? Yeah, um, I love the topic. And there is so much research around language being um, like a building block of how we create the world around us, how we contribute to the world around us. And we can really create shifts in for for the negative or for the positive with our words with our language and so looking at your communication style and really getting familiar with what works for you and really caring about what works for your partner is just game changing and it's so important that we begin to to take a serious look at at these things so um, I think that we can resonate with more than one love language. I think that we can have multiple. I think that maybe there's like one or two that are really, really close to home for us that really, really do the trick and really have us feeling um, in our best. And so just playing around and seeing with like what feels good, put it on. How does this work? Um, how does this feel on when I'm praised, when I am appreciated or thanked or whatever that language that is that you want to try on in your relationship. And it's not like a one size fits all. Um, and you get to play and you get to be flexible here. So I just think yeah. it's so important that we get so familiar with our language and communication style. Love it. Awesome. Let's go. I'm so excited. This is such a good topic. I honestly love this topic a lot. All right. Um, getting back to the language of love, the second language of love is acts of service. Now, what this basically means is what are you doing to serve yourself if you are in a relationship with yourself or what are you doing to serve your partner, your spouse, your uh, family, your friends, any other relationship that you are looking for right now? How are you serving them? Right. Like no acts of service can be completely different things. It can be, um, you know what? Take out the trash. You know what? I am going to go and give you a massage today. I am going to get food today. I'm going to make food today. I'm going to clean the house. Everyone has specific things that they like being done for them. Right. This is how you express your love. This is not... Um, Personally, this is something that I understood really recently is for a really long time, I was taking notes of all the things that I was doing for my family, the household course, right? Like I was like, yeah, I do cleaning, I do dusting, I uh, I do the dishes, I, uh, you know, I water the plants, I do this, 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 there are so many things that I do and no one does things back for me. And I was going in a <laughs> roller coaster ride. It happens. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I was going through that for this one. Yes. No, you know what? That's the thing. You know, I was doing all these things. And for some reason, I was like, I am feeling underappreciated. So I was keeping track of all the things that I was doing. And then I very quickly realized, and by very quickly, it took me literally 26 years, realized that, uh, <laughs> that, you know what, this doesn't make sense. Like, why am I taking notes? I am doing this to love my family to show that I respect them to show that I am here to support them to show that I am here uh, to hold space for them something that Gisela who is a member of our community said recently as telling her bro I don't like this at all I, I don't like cleaning up the house and this and this and this she was like you're just preparing space for you to manifest whatever you're working on right now that's like don't do that to me <laughs> why why no but no honestly I feel like at the end of the day when you are doing acts of service remember that you're not doing it to keep track of who wins who loses you're not doing it to keep track of how amazing you are and how disgusting the other person in the relationship is you're not doing it for that reason at all. You're doing it because you love them. You're doing it because it's an act of service, right? Maybe they can do something back for you. Maybe you can let them know this is how I like being served. 
this is what I appreciate. This is what I resonate with. Acts of service come down to that. So for a lot of times, uh, I was reading a couple of books in there and they spoke about how there is this person who often, you know, drops their clothes all around the house. And the wife gets aggravated because of it, which is like, you just have to pick them up and keep them in their own place. But the husband wasn't like, yeah, I, I love you. I just wanted, I was super excited to see you. So I just wanted to come over and hug you. Um, and I feel like at the end of the day, there is a space where you have to think about, ooh, service. How am I serving them? At the end yeah. of the day, it can get aggravating. It can get annoying. I'm not going to lie. It's not like it doesn't get annoying. It's not like it doesn't get aggravating. It does. It's not like it doesn't irritate the heck out of you. It does. And still you do it because it's an act of service. And when you start doing it from that sense, here's something. The reason why uh, this is something that's really important to me and it is something that took a really long time for me is because I was not on board with this. I don't, I mean, not that, you know, acts of service usually put me out of the loop. It's not that, but like for me, cleaning up the house, for me doing all these things, there were multiple stories that were tied into that. There was the conventional, like, I am not every other woman out there. I am a successful person. I have to sit and work. I don't have time for this. There were all these stories linked up. And all of these stories came from a place of insecurity for me. Because it felt like if I was doing this, this is what is going to get carried forward. When I get married, whenever that is, I will be expected to do these things. And I am not someone who needs to do these things. I don't resonate with it. I don't vibe with it. right? And I'm not saying that you're at fault here. I'm not saying your emotions don't matter. That is not the point in case. It's about understanding where those emotions are coming from. Understanding yeah. where all of this lies. Right? When I realized that, number one, I'm not yet married. Number two, this is something that I'm doing right now for the current moment. The future can change. In future, I can hire someone to help me with household work. In future, I can hire someone to do all the other things that I don't vibe with. But for now, I am present here. And rather than doing it out of anger, out of irritation, out of disgust, out of, ah, I don't want to do this. I can do it with love. So I have shifted things around. And here's how I have done that. Like kind of tying up with the love language and all of those things here. But I listen to calming music. I try listening to podcasts. I try to add value to the time, which I feel like I'm wasting by cleaning up the house. But at the end of the day, when I get into this, when I start doing the household course, I start with the concept of I am doing this because I love the house that is giving me shelter. I'm doing this because I want to respect everything that's happening around me, right? So and I'm kind of, we got way off topic, reeling us back in. Acts of service is something where you do something for the other person out of a place of love not out of a place of I have to do this, not out of a place of they don't understand me, not out of the place of I am the only one who's doing everything, but out of the place of love. When you look at things like that, I promise you things change. They do, right? At the end of the day, you have to get back to them and let them know what works best for you, right? So for example, if I don't like cleaning up the house i'm going to tell my pe my family that you i don't like doing this but i want i'm going to do it nonetheless what i would like in return is after i'm done with everything let me know what a good job i did let me know how dope i am let me know that i did it irrespective of the fact that i didn't want i didn't want to do it i still did it so i am getting that appreciation i am getting the love the respect it's not like they didn't do that earlier but for me, my language of love, the best language of love for me is words of appreciation. So words of affirmation, words of love, words of affection. And so when I give something, I open space to receive something else as well, which is really huge for me. So yeah, acts of service. If you feel 
that your partner or you resonate with the acts of service, ask them how they would like to be served. Ask yourself how you would like to be served. What does acts of service look like to you? It can be something that is very specific to you as an individual. What does that look like for you? Even if it is your individual thingy, if you are working on rebuilding the relationship with yourself and you feel like acts of service is the way that you can build that relationship and evolve that relationship, ask yourself, what does that look like? What does that look like for you? But yeah, Kerina, anything you want to add on before we jump on to the next thing? Yeah, I think you hit it great. Um, <clears throat> acts of service and just staying away from being transactional, right? Like we do things from a transactional place and that just never really works out well for anybody because uh, it just turns it just turns things into an awkward messiness of like, wait, are you doing, you know, why are you even doing this? So uh, the come from is super important, not coming from obligation, not coming from trying to get your needs met. I'm going to do this in hopes of getting my needs met. No, it's staying in proper communication, clear communication within yourself, meeting your own needs, and then coming from that place of love and and truly service um, mm -hmm. is so important. Yeah. Love it. Let's go. All right, let's jump into the hard love language, which is gifts. Now, I feel like this is something that every person relates to solely because we all had those moments where we woke up on Christmas uh, day morning and we had like a lot of gifts to look through all these beautiful things and we felt that joy, that unstoppable love for Santa Claus, for as we grew up, our parents who were still pretending to be Santa Claus. Uh, for all these things right like for for example or for me gift giving is something that's really important and it's not the big gifts it's the tiny things for me personally right so for example the best way that I can reconnect with myself is when I gift myself something good I recently bought this um, coffees like uh, bottles of coffees uh, instant coffees that have flavors added in them and I was like yo this is so good I I worked my way through two bottles and then I was like I, I have to buy another two I can't and then when I got them I could feel the amount of joy that I was experiencing because I was like ah this is it I love this feeling you know everyone experiences different emotions but for some giving gifts can be a way of showing that you love them, right? And gifts don't necessarily need to be the big ones. It can be, I'm not saying it can't be. I like to be, you know, swept off my feet. Uh, but, <laughs> but you can also have gifts that are important. Let me bring this into a beautiful way. Gifts matter a lot when they have meaning attached to it, right? Now, for example, if uh, Karina is sitting over there and I'm like, yo, Karina, you're such an amazing community manager for the stress busters. Here you go, a bouquet of flowers. And she's like, I am allergic to flowers. We're like, But I got flowers for you. These are yours. She's like, I'm allergic to flowers. But I bought flowers for you. It's not going to matter. She is not going to appreciate the gift. I will feel like, oh, she is rejecting my gift. When in reality, I could have gifted her something else which she absolutely loves, right? And vice versa. Karina can get me a gift like, Mother Ima, you are the best person in the world. I'm like, yes, I know. Uh, and then she's like, here you go. And I'm like, I don't like this. I want books. And she's like, no, but I bought these amazing things for you. I'm like, I don't need it, right? So understanding what it is that you want to give them is really powerful, Gift giving is not restricted to festivals. It's not restricted to, um, oh, we had a fight. So here you go, an apology gift. It's not restricted to that. It's the little things. How can you gift your partner or yourself something beautiful? An example of this can look like simply having post-it notes with something that you love about them. Hey, I hope you have a good day. 
plastered on their tiffin box or plastered on their laptop or something like that right i know this wonderful couple who gets flowers for each other every single day in the morning small things not necessarily huge flowers that are present in their neighbor neighboring area they get that for them but that is important you need to understand what kind of gifts you're giving what's the purpose and are you giving it out of love or are you giving it because you just had a fight and you don't want to communicate so you hope that this gift is going to shut them up you know you know what i mean so yeah gift giving karina anything you want to add on to it before we get yeah to- i think um the meaning and the value and the thought behind it too is is really important uh i used to hate that with my ex husband when he you know i <laughs> I would actually feel worse when I would be given something just, and you can feel that energy, right? It's like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. Like, I want to make up for this. I want you to just be happy and get over something. So here, and it's like, it doesn't feel good to receive Mm -hmm. in that way. So um, yeah, that one hits close for me. I think just having somebody think of you like, hey, I was just thinking of you and I just appreciate you just out of nowhere for no reason and even if it's something very small it doesn't have to be anything expensive but just a little note or something that says I you are on my mind and I love and I appreciate you is so much more meaningful than like a Louis bag or something that mm. costs all this money or this big electronic thing that's really expensive is there's there's more meaning and more value for me personally in those thoughtful things. Mm. And so I think understanding who you're wanting to gift and why and where that's coming from is just super important. What's the energy around this gift and why am I giving it to this person? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Ooh. Yes. Awesome. Let's get into the next language of love, quality time. I feel like this is the foundation of so many relationships, especially the relationship with yourself, because quality time, time, according to me, is how present are you? You Mm. know, if I'm having a conversation with you, are you on your phone? Are you completely distracted? Like some people, they love being on their phone while they have a conversation with you because that helps them stay focused and that's completely fine. But are you at least being present? Are you listening? Are you holding space? Are you ensuring that the person in front of you feels heard, seen, and felt? I feel like oftentimes the people that I coach come from a space where they feel neglected, where they feel like they haven't been heard, they haven't been seen, they haven't been felt before, right? They they feel like no one understands them. Quality time is something that enables you to be in space with someone where you truly see who they are as an individual truly hear their language so for me quality time is really important and if it is for your partner you need to figure out how many times in a week in a day would you like to spend quality time with them right this can look like five to ten minutes of quality time where I'm just sitting there listening to you talk about something that you're passionate about listening to you talk about um, how your day went listening to you rant listening to you went listening to you and that is enough for me and that is enough for you hallelujah right like Amen. it's so important yeah <laughs> it's I so know. important. it's so important you need to figure out because I feel like a lot of people spend quality time thinking that I'm going to take this person out to a restaurant once a week. We're going to have food. We are going to talk about all the important matters about the family, about, uh, oh, we have to do the taxes. Oh, uh, the kids are not eating their food. Oh, we have so many assignments. You have all these things. We are not necessarily connecting. You're just Mm -hmm. doing it out of obligation, right? Mm -hmm. It's... It's not that. That is not how quality time is spent. Mm -hmm. Quality time is when you hold space for the other person in a way where they feel seen, heard, and felt, right? It is not about like you can rant about your office day and that's completely fine as long as the person in front of you 
is willing to listen and is willing to hear you and feel you this is something that happens right i feel like this is from a personal perspective every time that i have spent time with myself where i have had moments of ranting and i try to shush myself up i try to be like shh i don't want negativity on the positive vibes every time i do something like that i notice that all that does it it builds up it's like you know when you add yeast to bread and you forget about it it keeps proofing and it keeps <laughs> growing in size there's just air in there like if you punch it it comes back to the original size but if you just leave it alone it just keeps poofing and poofing and poofing until it's like this entirely huge space which is completely unnecessary which can burst open at any time mm-hmm. there is no point and logic in it every time i try to shush myself off every time i'm like not about that energy that energy builds up and it screws over my life and that is something that i'm not <laughs> happy about 90% of the time so it's okay to rant i'm not saying that you can't rant as long as you're willing to open that space up for the person in front of you as well it's not nice if all you're doing is you're ranting and you're like oh well that's it 15 minutes on the clock time has stopped i'm going to go get back to work you go do whatever you want to that is not it that is just you dumping your emotions dumping your feelings dumping your baggage onto another person and hope that they'll be fine with it just because they love you love is built on mutual respect if your love language is quality time and if the person in front of you has the same love language you need to open space so that you guys can have that time together where you can build together not just in ranting even if you rant for like 15 minutes be like hey i'm sorry i needed to get that out i'm glad that it's out what can we do now to ensure that you receive something from me what can i do to ensure that you can let go of whatever you need to let go how can we communicate better quality time is meant around that it can be like looking at stars it can be going for picnics it can be watching movies together it can be doing karaoke it can be playing with your pets but those quality times needs to exist if they don't you're going to very quickly get annoyed and repulsed with each other even if it is the relationship that you have with yourself quality time needs to exist not only once a week figure out if you can do that every single day 5 to 10 minutes at least where you can spend quality time with whoever you are in a relationship with right now whichever relationship that you are thinking of as we go about this workshop karina anything you want to add my love yeah i think you hit it really well actually uh, quality time is a big one for me that's probably my number one and um almost a quality time filled with true presence of like i want to be here because i love you and it really doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing just being here with you and taking in this moment of connection is that quality time right and those moments mean in fact so much more to me than like a big fancy dinner we have to plan this fancy thing we have to do something really exciting and get out of town and go do this activity or go here do this and have all this like a buffet of stuff around us to make mm-hmm. it to make it um meaningful and it doesn't it can literally just be like i just want to take this 10 minutes with you because we haven't seen each other and really just enjoy it and embrace it and that is so much more meaningful than um you know the big fancy dinner the big plans and stuff which are great too those are fun too it's just doesn't always have to be that mm. way but quality time is super important and when you are present when you're not distracted and your mind isn't somewhere else thinking of your next to do list it's actually what brings the meaning and the value into spending that time together and that can be done anywhere for any amount mm. of time so no. yes love it love it a lot awesome let's get on with the fifth language of love physical touch now this is a language of love that i resonate with a lot 
solely because I feel like oftentimes touch is a way for us to sense, obviously being one of the senses uh, that we have, but touch is a way of sensing the emotion that we hold, right? Like for me, if my hand is here and I hold on extremely tight to it, in that moment, I can know that, ah, this person is afraid. Ah, this person is uh, angry with me. This person needs my support. Everything can be understood with touch if you are in that open space. Personally for me, that's my thought process behind it. But physical touch is something that's really important because it's a way to connect with yourself. It's a way to connect with your partner, right? For me, the briefest amounts of touch can hold so much meeting, meaning, right? Like I remember uh, my ex once very softly he did this in the passing. Didn't mean much to him. But for me, I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. Ah, I feel so valued and appreciate. Physical touch can mean a lot. And for example, I will talk from my personal experience when it comes to rebuilding my relationship with myself. I love constantly being in touch with myself. I love doing this. I love being in a place where I can appreciate my own body, where I can appreciate this vessel that has been granted to me by the universe so that I can do the work that I want to do, right? This is a powerful vessel. And for me to appreciate it, touch is a powerful tool, right? I mean, how would I go about experiencing this body experiencing this vessel if I don't appreciate it if I don't feel it these different textures on my face right my back my hands how would I go about appreciating it if I don't necessarily know it if I can't map out my body does that make sense for me it doesn't for me physical touch is a big yes right even with your partner it can be the slightest of touches. It can be the slightest of things. It can be just holding someone's hand. And that can be powerful. It can be, you know, for me, I know that every time I am stressed out, I go and I ask my mom for a hug. For me, that physical touch helps me calm down. Right? When I'm stressed out, I lie down on, my, on her lap and she plays, like she just moves her fingers through my hair and that feels calming that feels relaxing and that is a physical touch once again it doesn't has to be you know every time I say physical touch people there are there might be a few people who are like oh sexual yes and uh, something <laughs> else right like that's not it physical touch is not restricted only to sex and other things revolving around it yes and a lot of different things it can be the innocent touches. It can be something else. It can be the touch of a mother ensuring that her baby is right. Her baby is okay. It can be the touch of me playing with my pets to calm them down. It can be multiple things. It can be me holding my family's hands when we are going through a difficult moment in life to let them know that we are here and this bond is not going to break. Physical touch can mean a lot of different things. What does it mean to you as an individual is something that you need to figure out for yourself. But yeah, Karina, anything you want to add on? Uh, yeah, no, again, I think you, I think you hit it really well. Um, it does not, we don't need to limit, like you were saying, limiting physical touch just to sexual acts or, um, you know, that's just one aspect. It can be so much more. And we really do take in so much information from feeling things. Physically feeling things is um, a great way to process and a great way to get in touch, right, with your reality. And um, it's, it's a big one for me, too. So just those small, like, pat on the back, uh, grab on the shoulder, just to know that the person that you're in the relationship with is really present. It's a way that we ensure like, hey, I see you, I feel you, and I'm present here with you just by a simple touch on the shoulder 
It can mean the world to your partner, to your daughter, to your friends when they're going through a hard time, just giving them a hug. We also, you know, we release chemicals in our body when we're Mm. experiencing physical touch as well. And those can bring, they, they bring healing into us. They bring calming and soothing. And so it's a big one for me too. Yeah, no, definitely. And that brings me to the concept, you know, like if you have seen someone who's hosting a breath work session with a lot of people in real life, you feel them placing their hands on the heart, Mm -hmm. right? Like you see all these people. And I feel like this is something that I wanted to touch upon for a really long time is subconsciously, we constantly place our hand on our chest every time someone praises us. Every time we think about something huge, every time we feel like someone is appreciating us for the work that we are doing, we subconsciously do this. Mm -hmm. And that's because we have, I feel personally that we have this inbuilt about receiving through love to ensuring that our heart is accepting, our heart is receiving what is being given to us. And a way to understand that is to place your palm on your heart. Feel your heart beat against your palm. Let yourself know that you are here, you're alive, and you are receiving something that you were meant to receive. You are receiving something that you deserve. So huge, right? Yeah, so huge from such a small act. I mean, that's, you know, we we put our hand on our heart when we're saying the Pledge of Allegiance or Mm. when we are um, vowing to something that is really big for us. You know, it's and it's a simple physical act, but there's so much meaning behind it. And Mm. it can be very transformative just in any relationship, even the relationship to yourself and especially the relationships to to the people around you. I love it. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we have gone through the five languages of love that has been shared with by Gary Chapman. I wanted to introduce another language of love. And this is something that makes a lot of sense to me personally, but I would like you guys to tell me if it makes sense for you as well. And it is silence. I know. How am I going to communicate via silence? I'm going to start that off with this quote that I recently read in a book called The 50 Rules of Love. And it made a lot of sense to me, which is why I wanted to share this with you. So from the 40 Rules of Love, I said 50 before, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. We got 40, yeah. Rules of, <laughs> 40 rules of love. Um, one of the rules that is mentioned is rule number five. Most of problems of the world stem from linguistic mistakes and simple misunderstanding. Don't ever take words at face value. When you step into the zone of love, language as we know it becomes obsolete. That which cannot be put into words can only be grasped through silence and I resonated a lot with that quote because for me if I am in silence in front of you and it's not the awkward silence it's the comfortable silence that we've all heard of right like words don't need to be spoken to fill in the void the void is something Mm. that we are comfortable with because you are there sharing it with me that is powerful I feel like silence can be such a great way to communicate because sometimes love doesn't need to be put into words. Love can't be expressed by words. Sometimes the silence is enough. Sometimes just being there in front of each other, knowing that you carry a lot of love for the other person is enough. It doesn't always need to be expressed via words. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't communicate. I'm not saying that you shouldn't put your feelings into words. I'm not saying that um, you should never let your partner know. You should always leave them guessing. That is not it. I'm saying that if you can, for five minutes, sit in silence with your partner, with yourself, try experimenting with it and see what happens, what you feel. It might be a bit awkward, but what do you feel? What do you feel when you enter the void together with them? How does that feel for you? Can you feel their love? Can that love be transmitted and fill up that void so much so that it's overflowing? Can that happen? I think that is very important. I try to sit in silence. 
for at least five minutes. And obviously there are, there's like a lot of mental chatter when you try to do that. There's always like, blah, 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 blah. a lot of that happens. And uh, you need to persevere through. You need to allow yourself to empty out whatever is happening in there. Just sit yeah. in silence for five minutes. It's it's very powerful. I swear to God, I sometimes put on just music and there's nothing, right? And in that nothingness, there might be music in the background that helps me cancel out all the outside distractions and focus within. And I swear to God, there in those moments, I am the most connected to God, universe, to the planet, to myself, to all the amazingness that is contained within this body, within this vessel. In moments like that, I am the most connected. Right? Ah, uh, It is so good to be in moments like that. Because that is when a lot of the questions that I never put out there, a lot of the questions that I didn't know that I was asking, get answered. Without me having to look for solutions. In moments like that, I'm just silent. And everything else happens around me, through me, and by me. And there's nothing more powerful than that. So I invite you to try spending five minutes of silent time with your partners. Right? You can add up things in here. You can take the um, five languages of love and you can mix things up here if you want to. You can just hold their hand. You can just look at each other. You can... Um, you can do this after you've gifted something to your partner and be in silence. It can be after you have shared your appreciation for them, after you have told them that you love them, be in silence. Allow that moment to resonate, right? That is something that's really powerful. I feel like um, it's kind of the singing bowl, you know? It's empty, but when you ring it and you just move it around and you let it be, the vibration still keeps going on. The music is still felt. Even after you have um, rung the bowl, the music still exists. Sometimes just dropping something in that void and allowing it to vibrate through it all, allowing it to vibrate through your body is something that's really powerful. So for me, silence is really important. That is what I sometimes seek out with myself and something that I would potentially seek out with my partners as well. Just being silent for five to 10 minutes. Very difficult for me. I know you guys are looking at me like, Madhurima, can you actually be silent? Like, <laughs> I know you, you keep talking nonstop. I'm like, I do, but I still need stuff like that. So yeah, Karina, anything you want to <laughs> add on to this? Uh, I love that you're... I... I love when you're talking all the time. It's great. Um, <laughs> See, this is why you're my community is... manager. <laughs> <laughs> silence is so powerful and often underrated and often has so much information there inside of connection, inside of the connection to ourselves, inside of the connection to the people that were around if you're around, if you're in relationship and around people that you can just be silent with, and you're like, hmm, this is great. We don't need to say anything. We can just be, and we can just feel, feel mm -hmm. the peace, feel the love, feel the connection, feel the vibe, whatever, how you, however you want to call it, whatever vibe is there, whatever energy is there. And it feels really good that just tells you so much without mm -hmm. even having to have communication. And same thing for the opposite. If you're in um, connections where the silence feels very tense and it doesn't feel very good and you feel like you have to almost contribute to something, put something in there. So just to make it feel better again, there's, there's so much information there. So you can learn wonders about yourself about the people that you're surrounded by in the silence mm -hmm. um I love it there was something else that I wanted to say but it's missing me now so um, oh I was middle. gonna say yeah. I, I remember the percentages so if you actually look at the percentage of communication and language that is verbal and spoken versus communication that is non- it's like a huge difference. There's actually so much more communication and things that are said 
in mm. nonverbal cues, nonverbal communication is so much more than actual like speaking and words. So the power in the silence don't underestimate it try it out see get a feel for it and then you're also allowing for another um like another avenue of connection right Mm -hmm. like we we don't have to really I don't have to tell you words I can just look at you now we're like reading each other's minds or something because we've sat in this silence together and we we feel each other we know the vibe I can kind of guess maybe more or less what you're thinking or um it gives you a more powerful connection to not just to yourself but again to to everybody and and I did want to add to um if you're not in relationship and you are single it's a great time to deepen the relationship with yourself reconnect to yourself again going back to the rebuilding um rebuilding the relationship with oneself workshop that we did a few weeks back and all of these one through six, the words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts, quality, time, touch, silence. We can give all of that to ourselves. We don't need to be in a partnership to experience mm. these things. And yeah. I think that um, in giving that to yourself, it opens up space for you to experience deeper when you do get into partnership, all of these things. Yeah. No, I definitely love that a lot. And that's the thing, you know, I want to add on, I feel like silence is something that is underrated and yet can be misunderstood. So I invite you, like, this is not something that you need to maintain throughout your relationship. This is something that you can try out to deepen the relationship, you know, but you still need to communicate. When you communicate clearly that that is when things will that is you cementing and adding more bricks to your relationship, right? But being in silence, practicing silence is something that can help you deepen that relationship, can help you evolve the relationship, right? And I feel like that is so important. Uh, You will notice a lot of times, and this is something that I have noticed, uh, when you are praying, in a church or I'm I'm not sure if that happens in the church and Karina you can let me know but for us there are we take these vows of silence where we don't speak because it helps us connect with God mm-hmm. right like for example tomorrow is Mahashivratri here in India and we will be practicing uh, like I personally will be uh, practicing uh, at least a half day fast where I won't be eating anything and I know that in moments of those silence I am connected to God. Obviously, there will be a few chapters in there where I'll be like, I'm so hungry. I need to eat something. I need to drink something. But like beyond that, there is connection. Beyond that, there is that energy that you feel. So I, you know what? I'm not going to spoil it for you. Try being in silence for five to 10 minutes and see what that brings up for you because everyone has unique experiences and that is yours to experience all these love languages are yours to experience we can just keep that out in the open we can just be an avenue where we can share these things with you bring awareness to these things but acting upon it is on you as an individual um karina anything you want to add before i kind of wrap everything up tie it up with a night type bow for the people to watch it later on uh no I think it's great I think um I think you hit everything really well and yeah it and just maybe as you're trying out new things new um styles of communication new lo- love languages and seeing how it feels maybe just try pushing if it feels uncomfortable I would say that's natural at first shifting anything and trying any new thing will always maybe mm. feel a little bit uncomfortable so pushing through that discomfort and seeing what's on the other side is my encouragement and my last little bit of my two cents here. Yes, I love it. And yeah, you know what, kind of piggybacking off of that, I invite you to practice all these love languages. So what you Mm -hmm. can do is practice each love language for a week at least so that you can understand if it is working for you, if it is something that you love. Uh, Because why I'm not saying just practicing it for a one single day, Hold on. 
sorry, excuse me. Um, but the reason why I'm saying not to practice it just for a single day is because if you're having a bad day and you're just trying it for the sake of trying it and you're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't work. I hate this. Going on to the next thing. <laughs> or if you're having a really good day and you try it and everything is great, but then it doesn't work the next day when you're having a normal day, you're like, this doesn't work. So try it out at least for seven days so that you have, an, you have a good feel if this is something that actually works for you as an individual or not. So try the six different love languages for yourself. If you have already done it before, I invite you to give it a try again, at least for three days. You know, just see if this is still your love language. See if it has evolved. See if you have changed. See if you'd like to mix things up like Karina was saying in the beginning. But in the list, prioritize your love languages and share it with your partner. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with yourself. Right? Remind yourself that this is how you love being appreciated as an individual. This is how you love building that relationship with yourself. And practice it. Right? That's not it. I'm not inviting you just to try this out, prioritize and have a list of all the things that you're doing and all the things that might work. But practice it on a daily basis. Something small. But still practice it because it can be such a huge change. And I'm not going to tell you what that change looks like because you are going to experience it on your own. And when you do, I invite you to comment below this YouTube video to tell us what worked best for you you know even after you're done experimenting share what are your love languages share what works for you share how that experience was for you and yeah with that we will see you in the next one uh before we dive off though something that i would invite you is uh we are doing this mastermind uh this all these workshops to kind of talk about the mastermind that we have right now going on within the community this is a way for us to bring awareness bring value and add on top of the value so we have a mastermind within the stress busters community where we will focus on particular things every single month we will have particular themes we have sessions with the intention being around making stress management fun we will have a lot of content that is going to be created karina is going to lead three breathwork sessions every week i'm going to lead two ground grounding sessions every week we are going to check in with each other we are going to hold space for each other we are going to have a private channel where if you ask for resources regarding something that you're working on you will get those resources as soon as possible like on a priority basis you get those resources as soon as possible and we have one day events that will every single month that will bring in experts to talk about something that they do to help with stress management, something that falls in their zone of genius. But also we invite the community members, the mastermind members to talk about something that they are working on, something that has worked for them. We hold space for each other. There is that aspect where we are going to, we are going to spend quality time with each other and uh, we are going to support each other. There's going to be bonfire sessions and there's going to be all these wonderful sessions. If you're not sure, Join in the stress the stress busters community by clicking the link below. It's a free community for all, whereas the mastermind is paid. The stress busters community is free, and you can experience all the multiple things that we have going on right now, which is dope. But yeah, Karina, anything you want to add? I think I've been talking too long. I was like <laughs> trying to grasp for <clears throat> breath between them. I'm like, oh my god, how much more do I have to talk? <laughs> Yeah, I think you hit everything. I'm super excited about the mastermind. Stress Busters is growing into something really beautiful, a really great community that people can just come and be accepted and dump their stress and go on to their lives to live more free and more full and yeah. more stress-free. Um, we're yeah. making it super fun, like you said, and the breath work yeah. and different different content different works um worksheets and activities that we're going to be planning that are going to be very informative and fun and useful and all the things so yeah I can't wait to get into yeah. it I think our yeah. first day Madharima is on 225 that's a Friday at the end of this month thank you 224 
Yeah. We've been we've been playing with the dates and uh, we're getting down our time zone because we're in two completely different time zones. So the time zone thing is going to be under control <laughs> and we're going to have yes. that down. But 224 Friday and we're starting at 10 a.m. that day yes. is going to be our first day that we meet for the mastermind yeah. and we're going to bring bring the value. So. Yes, and we have two experts that are going to join us. One of the experts is going to talk about how to supercharge personal relationships because she's a love educator. And another person that we're bringing in is a photographer who's going to talk about how we can take better photos of ourselves, of our families, of uh, anything that fills energy into our bowl, our cups, our buckets, whatever you want to look at it as uh we are going to have so much fun it's going to be so cool and yeah once again if you want to join the stress busters community get a feel of what we are creating because we are one of the only stress management communities in the world and we are focused on making it fun we are trying our level best to ensure that we don't add on to your personal life we don't like take things away from your personal or professional life but instead we help you evolve your personal and professional life this is something that is going to once again supercharge your personal and professional lives this is not going to be something that you have to kind of add to your routine and your to-do list and you have to be like oh my god i have to do this otherwise i'm gonna get stressed no it's going to be fun you will want to do it that is our intention with that thank you so much for being here thank you so much for sticking around so grateful to have you here yes and so it is. And so it is.